What's up guys? My name is Emily. Welcome to our channel, Gale Force Twins. We got my twin sister Amanda over here and Gale Force Mom with us today. Okay, we're out here sword fishing and I just wanted to do something really quickly. We saw some mahi swim by the boat and I want to show you guys how to get a school of mahi with your boat behind your boat. we saw the mahi I threw out squid like quickly just fast and because they swam by really fast and then I threw out mahi on a rod and I left it out while we're drifting with the swordfish rod out then a mahi came ate the squid on the rod and I have Gale Force mom right here with the mahi on the rod in the water Reel up a little bit. Let's see this mahi. All right, so we are leaving this mahi in the water, guys. See? And all of his friends, mahi are friendly, guys. They want to be with be with each other. So his friends are hanging out. And we can take our time, relax, get more rods rigged, get some baits on. How's it going? Right there. They're behind the boat. Ready? Amanda's got one on. Reel. Oh, you miss them? Oh, oh, they're chasing it, chasing it. They're kind of small They're everywhere. Guys. They're kind of small mahis, but the idea is just to get the school behind the boat and get them all interested. But the other thing you can do is throw chunks of squid. Emily, why don't you throw chunks of squid to keep right. them around? Okay, okay. So basically you guys got to keep feeding them and chumming them and keeping them around. Usually when there is a school, they're going to be small. You're not going to get like huge ones. You'll have to, sometimes you have to pick their own. Oh, Amanda's got one on. Got one on. Okay. Look at him. Is that, should I pull him in? Yeah, swing him. Look at the couple. Ready? One, two, swing. Oh. Swing. Okay. <laughs> Here we go. All right. Let's measure this guy. And this whole time, we've got Gale Force Mom keeping her mahi in the water for us. All right. Let's get another bait out. Let's see. Okay, they have to be 20 to the fork. Okay, this one's 19. Ready? We're gonna let him go. There we go. Right. Okay, let's get, get more bait. Water fast. Here, let's cut some chunks, Amanda. Here's scissors. Here's scissors. All right. You got this ballyhoo, guys. Chunk ballyhoo works great. Whole ballyhoo works. Basically, coming up. If you look down, look in the water, see if you can see the fish. There's one there, there's one there, there's. They're everywhere. They're everywhere, guys. I wish you could see them. Let me maybe try putting a GoPro in the water for you. right now because they stopped eating the squid. Another little tip, we have this mahi that's been in the water. I know he's too small, not gonna be a keeper. We don't want him to tire out and die because then the school will leave and we don't want to kill a small mahi. So we're gonna let him go. The one that Amanda has on, on this rod, just got hooked up. So we're gonna switch mahis. This one's gonna sit in the water and this mahi we're gonna let go. All right, there he goes. There he goes. Swims away. Let's see if we can pick through these small ones and hopefully we'll Woo! Hopefully. Rodney's Rodney's doing the job over there. <laughs> hopefully we can get a keeper. But either way, guys, this strategy works for big mockies, small mockies. 
As long as you get on the school, you're good. Guys, look at this. Look at this jack. It, it came up. Amahi spit it up. It was on the deck of the boat. Wanted to show it to you. So crazy that creatures get this small. They get this small. They start this they small. They start this small. I and know. they get bigger. Baby jack. Baby jack. What a cutie. It's dead anyways. We can toss it. We're going to toss it, but I, I want to get a picture of it. <laughs> My mahi is right here. I'm ready to pull him in the boat. What I'm gonna do is I'm not gonna grab the line and yank it. I'm actually gonna swing him in with the whole rod. Cut the spool. Swing him! Swing him! That's the best way, guys. There you go. Perfect. All right, let's triple check, measure him. If not, we're gonna let him go real quick. 20 inches to the four. 20 to the, 20 to the four. four. All right, that's 20 and a half. This is a keeper mahi, guys. Let's show you the rig, show you how we did it. And just like that. This is a keeper mahi, but he's a little bit small, so we're gonna toss him. That's exactly how you're gonna do it, and then 20 inches you can keep them. And we can do it, we can do this all the time, so we're not gonna keep them. But we'll show you the rig. Yeah. We have a lot of fish in our freezer, so we really don't need more. But either way, that's a really perfect way. 20 inches to the fork, that would have been a keeper. Completely acceptable to keep it. We will show you like the rigs we are using, so when you guys are out here, you can do that too. Let's go over the rig we have. We are just using a 5.0 circle hook with 40 pound fluoro leader, like 10 feet of it, not rocket science. And our reel is topped with 20 pound mono right here. And that's because we were sail fishing. You don't really need the mono for mahi fishing. Underneath it is like 30 pound braid. So you could go straight from the braid to your 40 pound fluoro leader to your circle hook. That's when you're pitching baits at them. Right. And it doesn't even always have to be a circle hook. You could use a J hook, guys. When they're, these mahis, they're hungry fish. When they're behind your boat, they live to breed and to eat. That's what you gotta remember. So it, like, like Amanda said, it's not rocket science. Don't overthink it. I'll show it. you guys really quick if you're gonna do so chunk ballyhoo, just chunk it, put the chunk on the hook, squid's the same thing. If you're gonna do a whole ballyhoo, it's kind of soft ballyhoo now. We broke the beak off. We just hook it underneath the jaw. Up through the top of the head, just like that. Put a whole ballyhoo out like that. Sometimes you gotta jig it, sometimes they'll eat it as is. And then the other option is you could chunk it. Let's see a chunked one, Amanda. This is my Ballyhoo chunk. So if you are gonna use chunk bait, this is the top of the Ballyhoo. And I basically just go through the back on one side and back through the top. I know I like to stay on the dark side of the meat because that's really where the skin is tougher and the belly is really soft. Another option is squid. And squid needs to be twice hooked, double hooked. So it stays on because it'll come off really easily. Let's see that, Amanda. So if we're doing whole squid, as opposed to chunk squid, I'm going to put the hook straight through, turn the hook down, and come back through the squid. Perfect. So it's twice through, and that's really gonna keep it on there. Chunk squid, and you can do the same thing, or imagine this is a chunk. Same concept. But I would probably double it through, even if it were a chunk like this. What's crazy about these mahi is that a lot of these are 19 inches, 20 inches, kind of right around there. They grow an inch a day, guys. So tomorrow, if we found these fish, they'd be 20, 21 inches and they'd all be keepers. Also, I want to add 20 inches to the fork means from the end of like the mouth to where the tail divots in. Like, yeah. That's just, so we'll you know. have a picture pop up and explain to you guys from the front to the to fork. The it's not the total length, it's the fork length. watching guys we hope you found this video helpful if you did please like it for us because that helps us to make more videos like and subscribe for more follow gale force twins on facebook instagram and youtube and if you have any other questions please post them in the comments we're or happy any to videos you want to see just let us know